Hi, everyone. It's me again. Uh, this time I'm all dressed up and ready for the big gal at the Renaissance for the Mayo Society. Oh, wait a second, though. It's not Saturday night. It's, it's Thursday afternoon, and I'm, I'm not at the Renaissance. I'm here at Progressive Field, as you can see. Uh, yes, it's true. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on your perspective, I am not going to make tonight's event. Um, I'm just a few blocks uh, away uh, put, cheering on our Cleveland Indians as they take on the Toronto Blue Jays in the American League Championship uh, Series. Uh, we talked about this possibility many months ago when uh, I was approached about this award, and uh, I cited it as a possibility that I might not be here because of the American League Championship Series. Possibly I even didn't believe it, but here we are, and, and it's certainly great for us, and it's great for Cleveland. So I'm going to miss you all tonight, um, but I'm going to take this opportunity by video to say a few words. And first, let me start by thanking the Mayo Society uh, for this award. Uh, it has been a, a, a great honor and, and, frankly, an honor that I've grown to appreciate over the last few months as I've, I've had a chance to think a little bit about my Irish heritage. Um, let me also thank uh, uh, Jerry Quinn and Tom Scanlon, who I've gotten to know through this process, and I should also thank Jim Boland, um, who I understand nominated me for this. Um, I also understand that we have some guests in the audience representing Ireland. Uh, let me call out a few. Uh, Mayo County Executive Peter Hines is here. Uh, I also understand Vice General Counsel Ragnar Almquist is here. Uh, Ragnar, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And I, we have a contingent from ACL here, uh, Terrence, led, led by Terrence Dever. Uh, so welcome. Uh, I also understand from Chicago, representing Galway University, we have Seamus Kavanaugh. So welcome all representatives of Ireland. Hopefully I had a chance to meet some of you yesterday uh, at the event at the clinic. Uh, but for those I didn't get the chance to meet, I'm sorry. I hope you have a great visit to Cleveland. Last, in terms of my greetings, I would like uh, uh, to introduce to all of you my sister-in-law, Janet Rath Kalaluka. Janet is here representing me tonight. Um, she is my wife, Karen's sister. You met Karen in the video earlier. Uh, Janet is one of our public servants. She currently sits at, um, on the bench at the Cleveland Municipal Court and is running uh, for Cuyahoga County Domestic uh, Relations Judge. Uh, thank you, Janet, for uh, st standing in for me, or pinch hitting, as we say. Um, I would also like at this time to maybe apologize a little bit for that video you just saw. Uh, apologize for a number of reasons. One, the acting. Uh, it's pretty clear I'm no Liam Neeson. Uh, second, I'd like to apologize for maybe some of the stereotypical generalizations I use there. Uh, one doesn't become Irish simply because they wear green or they develop a taste for Guinness. It's certainly a nice part of it, but that's not what being Irish is about. We might have been able to explore that a little further if we had spent more time at the Irish Cultural Gardens. However, you may, may not have noticed it was pouring rain there, so we didn't get a chance to spend a whole lot of time there, but I certainly want to respect the Irish culture, which is a lot more than wearing green and drinking Guinness. Um, and finally, I want to point out, you know, these Hollywood types that make movies, like, or pretend to, like, like me, might play a little, little loose with the truth. Um, I was, wasn't quite as clueless about my Irish heritage as we depicted. Um, I certainly identify as Irish, and yes, I've had a Guinness or two before. Uh, I have, in fact, been to Ireland a number of times, including a Mayo. And by the way, my golf game is not as bad as depicted in the video. The point of the video was just sort of establish the fact that throughout my life, I may have labeled myself as Irish, but I didn't really identify myself as Irish. And this, is, this last few months has been an opportunity maybe to think about that and better understand it. And to do that, let me talk a little bit about my family history. And I'll, and I'll start with me growing up in Chardon. When you would ask me, um, where is, where is the Dolan family from? My response would not have been, we're not from Ireland, we're from Cleveland Heights. Cleveland Heights really was the great ancestral home and, and the great mythic journey of our family was when my father took his family from Cleveland Heights all the way out to Chardon in the late 50s. Um, and that was quite a journey back then. Um, and so over the years when we talked about our family lore, it really revolved around family life in Cleveland Heights. Uh, my great-grandfather, Dave Dolan, um, who grew up in Cleveland Heights, spent most of his adult life working in the basement of the family house as an inventor. Um, I'm told that the family drove around in a car 
with automatic transmission before automatic transmission really existed, flabbergasting any mechanic who went around looking for the clutch. Um, but the family didn't do all that well because uh, Grandpa apparently wasn't much for patents. In fact, my father says the reason he became a lawyer was because da his dad uh, never could get a patent. Um, but maybe the bigger influence in our life, in my life, because my grandfather Dave died when my father was young, was, was my great uncle Tom, um, who apparently did know how to get a patent uh, and uh, developed a company called the Beckman that uh, my friends uh, Pat and Dad Con Dan Conway over the Great Lakes Brewing Company have talked about because I think his company uh, or, or his partners were located in very, very close to, if not on the site that he is currently located at. But Uncle Tom uh, did very well for himself in the plastic wrapper business and thus was a great influence in our lives, including sending my father, the youngest of four boys, off to college to be the first member of the Dolan family to go to college. He went to the University of Notre Dame. Um, the stories also talked about my father's older brothers uh, uh, and the similar journeys they took. They, one brother went, moved east from Cleveland Heights to Cheslin, another one went to Jefferson, and another one went to New York City. And that one I'll talk a little bit further about. Uh, Charles Dolan, uh, my uncle, played a gr great influence in my life as when he moved to New York City, he moved to become one of the pioneers in the cable television industry, forming what became known as Cablevision, which at the time was one of the leading cable companies in the country. Uh, he also was really one of the leaders in the sports industry, and you know that today uh, by his companies or my uh, family's public companies now, ownership of the New York Rangers and the New York Knicks and Madison Square Garden. Um, all great businesses that we're very, very proud of and helped launch us into the sports business. And that really was the Dolan family legacy as I understood it, the great adventure of the Cleveland Heights family. However, with this award and with my focus on my Irish roots, and fortunately, because I have some relatives who were more curious about my Irish roots than I had been, I had the opportunity to learn a lot more about my family and push back uh, beyond Cleveland Heights. And I know a lot, and I'm not going to share it all with you, but I, I would like to take you to 1844 in Limerick, Ireland, and introduce you to Cornelius Harding. Uh, Cornelius Harding at the time was 19 years old. Um, and uh, on February 1st of that year, he went to prison. Uh, apparently, uh, he didn't get along very well with the British authorities wasn't terribly interested in getting permits and license to do certain types of business. And he was in prison until August 19th, 1944, where he was released. And on that same day, he took as his bride, 15-year-old Catherine Marie Smith. I don't know anything about their courtship, um, but uh, those two became my great, great grandparents. Um, who knows what they thought about the future at the time uh, and what it would hold for them. Um, but what we do know is they produced 11 children. Um, uh, not all of them survived childhood. And in fact, my great, great, and lose track of the greats, grandfather Cornelius didn't really survive the process as well. He died alone uh, in a Limerick workhouse. Uh, but, and he died alone because prior to that, my great, great grandmother Catherine and seven of the children made the journey from Limerick, Ireland, ultimately to Cleveland. Why they chose Cleveland, why they left Ireland, I do not know. But I do know that they set up sometime in the 1870s in Cleveland and that my great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, became widely known in Cleveland as the Spice Lady who sold spices on Public Square. And she also set up a boarding house. And that boarding house became relevant in my family life because another young person, a young man named David Dolan, was born in 1858, somewhere in Ireland. Don't really know where, maybe Mayo, not sure. In fact, we'll claim him as a Mayo guy. Um, we don't know much about his family, but what we do know is he ended up in Cleveland in the 1870s working as a laborer in a steel mill. And he, he boarded in that very boarding house uh, that, my, that my great, great grandmother started. Um, and there, she met one of Catherine's daughters, Frances Mary Harding. And in 1880, David and Frances are married and became my great-great-grandparents. They gave birth to nine children. 
two of those being my grandfather, uh, um, David Dolan, and the great uncle Tom that I referred to. And that is the Dolan family history that I've, I've learned and the connection back to Ireland, which gives me some credibility today to stand before you as an Irishman. But where my real credibility comes from is um, from my wife, Karen, who, were I here, I would be introducing her right now and having her stand up. But you met her already in that video. Karen's family, growing up in West Park area of Cleveland, is through and through Irish. They have worn their, their Irishness on their sleeves throughout their lives um, and because it's been an integral part of their lives. Um, Karen's mother, some of you may know, is Jean McNeely, um, also from Ireland, obviously. But the real star of the show is Karen's paternal grandmother, Bridget Guilty, because Bridget came to this country from Ackle. Um, what I know about Bridget's story is that at age 12, after losing apparently a couple of brothers in the uh, conflicts with the British, came over on her own, sponsored by somebody here in Cleveland, uh, to, to live here in Cleveland. Um, extraordinary journey. Yeah, as a parent now, I can't imagine letting a 12-year-old travel alone across the Atlantic, particularly at, at that time, you know, the 18s, well, no, early 1900s, excuse me. But an extraordinary journey, and that led ultimately to her meeting what turned out to be Karen's grandfather, and Karen's rather Irish family flowed from that. So I may not be from Mayo, but Mayo roots are very strong in the Dolan family, at least the Dolan family that I am part of now. Um, and I've learned as well how important the Mayo roots are to Karen's side of the family. A uh, long time ago, I was at a family gathering, and, and family and friends sometimes gets blurred together, but talking to a fellow named Joe Malloy, talking about Karen's family, and he brought the news from Ackle Island that the family had just received indoor plumbing. And uh, uh, I was rather amazed at that, uh, because one, indoor plumbing, I kind of thought we all had that, but uh, some of us got to it later than others. Uh, but more I was amazed by the fact that they were connected to people, to real live people, real family back in Ireland. Uh, and what an important part that was in their lives. Uh, made me realize that whether we're in Cleveland or we're in Ireland, we're all still part of the same tribe. Did I say tribe? I did. So let's talk a little baseball. Um, I learned, as you saw in the video, that they don't play much baseball in Ireland. But what I also learned is when the Irish came to America, and particularly to Cleveland, they took up baseball with, with, with a vengeance. In Cleveland, baseball was just becoming popular when the Irish started to arrive. Our first team was in 1865, um, and that's just when the Irish were manning our steel mills and, and working our ports. And in 1879, when the uh, first team in the National League was formed in Cleveland, the Cleveland Blues. They were known throughout baseball as the most Irish team in all the game. They had six starters uh, who were Irish, and in the following year, they added a seventh. Uh, so very, very Irish team. I understand three years later, Hugh one-arm daily threw the first Cleveland no-hitter. Um, we could probably use Hugh this weekend uh, against the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, I also know that around this time, one of the most prominent families in the history of baseball, the Delahanty family, um, were five brothers who lived on East 34th Street here in Cleveland, all played in the professional baseball, including Ed Delahanty, who played for various teams in Philadelphia and Cleveland, who became one of the most prolific home run hitters, at least from the dead ball era perspective, in all of baseball and is now in the Hall of Fame. In 1901, the American League was formed and Cleveland had a franchise, the franchise which is now today the Cleveland Indians. Its first manager was Jimmy McAleer, um, who turned out to be no Tito Francona, but at least he established the Irish uh, with, with our franchise. Uh, a few years later, in 1919, Steve O'Neill joined the Indians as a catcher. The next year, he helped lead the Indians to our first World Series. Steve ended up uh, as a manager uh, for the Indians. Um, and then later on, interestingly enough, uh, uh, members of his family, the O'Neill family, uh, owned the Indians. They owned the Indians from the 70s, in, in the 1970s and the 1980s. 
And not long after that, starting in year 2000, the Dolan family joined the history of Irish lineage in Cleveland baseball when we bought the team. We've owned it now. This is our 17th season, which makes us either the longest or the second longest tenured owners of a, a baseball team in Cleveland. Um, it certainly had its challenges, our ups and downs on, uh, on the field. Although I think you'd be surprised to know that um, over the course of that 17 year period, our record is pretty good relative to other 17 year periods in history of Cleveland baseball, particularly if you factor in some of the challenges that have arisen in recent years with baseball economics and the introduction of cable TV. But that is a, a talk for another time. What I would say is that for the Dolan family, owning the team has been an absolutely wonderful experience. Um, it has been a great family affair um, for me. It's been an opportunity to work with my father over the years. Um, it's been a chance for our family to get together on a regular basis. I think if, on any given night, if you look up at the owner's suite, you're, you're not gonna see the titans of business and industry. Rather, you're gonna see a bunch of young kids running around, playing their own baseball game while the big boys are playing down on the field. Um, and it's been just a great opportunity for me to interact with my sons, uh, celebrating division titles, doing all kinds of great baseball things, creating what, what we think is, is a, 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 a strong family atmosphere, um, one that's I think has spilled over into the culture of our organization, because I, I feel like with that sort of family influence, we've created an atmosphere of trust and caring, which I believe has had an influence on the organization. Um, if, you, if you've studied our organization, you've seen a level of continuity and, and a emphasis on personal development of people um, making them better rather than possibly discarding them. And we hope and we believe that has been a competitive advantage for us. Um, and maybe that's manifesting itself this year um, as we're obviously having a great year. Um, I consider this sort of our Irish ball club, if you will. We're a little small, maybe a little uh, underestimated by people, but we're sneaking up, people, sneaking up on people. And whenever we have a challenge, we rise to it. Um, and I hopefully we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, let me conclude um, with respect to baseball by telling you that, um, you know, we don't think of ourselves as being in the business of baseball or even in the business of entertainment. What we say is we're really in the business of creating memories, of celebrating families, and of connecting generations. Um, and that's certainly been true in my family, you know, I, I think back to my father telling stories of going to the 1948 World Series, and I remember as a kid going with my parents to a game on Easter Sunday and watching Mickey Lolich's cousin, Ron Lolich, hit a grand slam to beat the Red Sox, and, and I've had great memories today, uh, today meaning in the last few days as we celebrate division titles, and I've been able to do that with my sons. And those are all great family members, memories that have connected our generation, and, and it's not unique, it's what, it's what we deliver. Um, it's, you know, fans today, you know, certainly this year certainly have enjoyed great memories like beating the Toronto Blue Jays in 19 innings and winning our 14th game in a row, or who, who will forget where they were when Tyler Naquin raced around the base paths, base path uh, to beat the Blue Jays on an inside the park home run, and hopefully we're creating further memories today. Um, but there are memories based on family and they are memories that connect generations, whether it's a, a parent bringing a child to a game or a grandparent bringing a child to a game or, or a family sitting around recalling experience they had through baseball. That's really the business that we deliver. And frankly, I think that's what the Mayo Society does by preserving the memories of families who have made the journey from Ireland uh, and particularly from Mayo to Cleveland um, and doing it in a way that connects generations of families who have gone gone on uh, and then developed lives here in Cleveland, but then reached back to Mayo and other parts of Ireland to connect with the families. It's the same business, it's the, it's the, same, and it's the same result, a really kind of strength, strengthening families and, and, and um, building values um, that uh, are enduring. So I, I thank the Mayo Society for the award they presented to me today, and, and I'll thank them for this too. Um, I believe you met my two sons at the very end of the video that you saw before this. Uh, they are boys that I'm, I'm extraordinarily proud of. 
Um, but I look at it a little differently right now because I now see them as sons of Mayo. And I don't see them standing alone either. I see the connection to a 12-year-old girl who made the journey from Ackle Island uh, to Cleveland and who became their great-grandmother. And I also see the connection to that teenage couple in Limerick um, who may not have known what impact they had uh, on future lives. Um, but when I see my two sons, I know uh, that they hit a grand slam and I'm very, very appreciative of that. So thank you again, Mayo. Uh, everyone have a fabulous evening and go Tribe.